Although not completely dead, 2D UI for virtual reality interfaces may be on its way out. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about 3D graphical user interfaces. But before I do that, I want to take a step back so we can have a look at the problem space. Many VR interfaces are using a ray cast in the form of a laser pointer in order to interact with the UI in a virtual reality environment. These are mainly 2D canvases consisting of windows, icons, menus and pointers, with the pointer being that of a laser. This is primarily because we don't really understand how to interact with a VR environment from the early adoption stage, and if we directly copy what we already know about interface and interaction design mediums, then we're able to create a familiar system or a user feedback loop that we're used to developing for with mobiles, tablets and desktop environments. But then if we take a step back even further and look at the issues with array-based interaction mechanism, well first of all it's not really accessible. Some interfaces, in a Half-Life Alex, for example, require you to use a sphere to rotate around enemies and to avoid them. Now, if you have a temporary accessibility issue, such as you break your hand, you're unable to rotate your wrist and get the full maneuverability that you're used to and you won't not be able to play this level in the game anymore. So with this in mind, I wanted to think about how I could potentially alleviate some of these issues regarding array-based interaction. And one of the things I wanted to look at was tremors. Every one of us has benign central tremors between the range of 8 and 12 hertz. And because the amplitude isn't so high, it's not really noticeable if, you, if you're not on a surface, but it is if you put your hands out in front of you and you don't have the support from the surface to prevent that. What I discovered was there was actually not really a low pass filter being used in the majority of VR interfaces, such as Steam VR and Oculus menu. And there's no accessibility menu in any of these platforms that allow you to toggle such a feature to reduce tremors. And by implementing a beta cutoff value, we're actually able to move a track controller distance quickly without lag while still supporting fine control interaction that require less movement. And this is a paper I've been working on for some time just now, so I'm not going to discuss that too much just here, but I will share in another video in the future. So I've tried to solve some constraints created during ray-based interaction by integrating an algorithm between the user and their input. And from this I wanted to explore what opportunities are available in a virtual reality that we haven't actually previously been exploiting as it's a 3D environment compared to a 2D interface which is where we're using the ray which is that of a traditional cursor. So to start here I wanted to continue my investigation in this area following an accessible first design philosophy and developed a multi-model modular system from this and this consists of 3D graphical interface elements and components of buttons and sliders which allow you to input and fire events using a variety of methods. First of all, the interface can be moved to where you want in the environment, and what this does is empower the user to choose where they want the user interface to be at specific times. If we look at static UI in virtual reality chat, then they are all predefined. There's lots of settings nested in different windows, and nesting is an issue that has always been an issue within interface design, for non-expert applications specifically. But now we have the opportunity to use our proprioception ability, our ability to understand where we are in 3D space, to interact with the environment as we would in reality. The interface comprises of panels which contain borders, which act as buffer zones to interacting with UI elements contained on the panels. They are coloured and contrasted appropriately to indicate that this is something you can interact with. Now the design I've used here is pretty minimal, but it's a proof of concept for now and it's to show how we can use this in a VR environment, taking into account occlusion and transparency with the use of shaders. One of the other key features of the modular interface allows us to move the panels around and interact with the buttons just using our fingers, as we would with hand tracking, or we can use something like the Valve Index Controller, where we use hand tracking with the controller still being worn, providing haptic feedback, and this was identified as an essential feature during a usability study I completed. And because it's been designed with an accessible first approach, we're also considering the future of interaction and not only the present. Existing haptic feedback technologies are good, but the valve knuckles are world class in my opinion, purely because I don't have to grip the controller and still get full finger tracking capability. And this is what enables us to receive haptic feedback while interacting with the interface while also still being able to grab elements intuitively as I would with real world objects. Now, because this is a 3D environment we're talking about here, we're also still able to use ray casting and use eye tracking to interact with the UI elements with the button press. And this is key to its accessible first design approach, meaning if you have a specific hardware peripheral, you can hook it up into SteamVR or OpenXR and bind interactions via the accessibility binding options available. Now, looking outwards from this area is using voice interaction and also brain-computer interfaces. 
Currently, there isn't really a defined mechanism for how we're going to interact with the system this way. Ideally, we're going to use a combination of eye tracking, voice, VCI, and with some haptic feedback, meaning we're probably still going to continue to use passive haptic feedback in this technology field going forward. So by this point in the video, hopefully you understand the concepts of the modular interface. It's designed with an accessible first philosophy using 3D user interface elements, which allow you to move the panels wherever you want and leaves developer discretion as a thing of the past. In addition, we have a multi-model approach, which allows users to interact with the interface using their own input mechanism. If they want to use their hands, eyes, or VCI in the future, we may have the opportunity to use additional technologies. We also have spatial context awareness. We have interfaces in context of the user and interfaces in context of the environment. In VR chat, we may mock up to a static user interface element, such as a video playback. And we may also have interfaces which are exclusive to us, such as menus, which follows our movement as we explore the environment. And this is very similar to non-diegetic user interfaces we may experience in video games. Again, core to its physical interaction part of the design philosophy, I'm looking for a body-centered interaction approach, meaning the user is engaging with the environment in a way that seems intuitive and natural. I also wanted to look into how we interact with buttons. Well, now we can use physics in a 3D environment. Everything around us in this interface is being powered by the physics engine in Unity currently. But if you watch this video, you could probably translate the techniques I've been describing into the game engine of your choice. And the buttons allow you to press down using force based off of a rigid body and collider. And it's pretty self-explanatory from a game development perspective. But also the slider was something that was a difficult challenge to take. We currently use sliders in VR using a ray-based approach, which requires a lot of upper body movement if you're not using the joysticks and a lot of rotation as well if you're using horizontal. And as they say in user interface and user experience evaluations, verticality, yes, horizontal, no. So I wanted to provide and explore mechanisms where I could get the user to interact with the way they desired without having to use large reins of motion. The developed slider is on a spring joint and you maybe noticed this from a year or two where I released a video about spring joints and this is where the design took me. It allows you to interact with an anchor point with your fingers and hands and everything is still an event based system meaning you can integrate this with any other form of interaction and engage with the interface in the way the user wants. So as I say, this has been a long journey for me in my PhD, but I think I've tried to innovate as best as I can, focusing on accessibility with a new design philosophy to provide the virtual reality community. Everything we found in the lecture notes and computing, which will be published in August 2023 in the Augmented Reality and Virtual Reality Springer book. I'll be presenting this at HCI International Conference in Denmark in August as well. So I do hope that this provides some insight into the, their area of research I'm focusing on.